This video is going to look at Beatrice from A View from the Bridge. So the character of Beatrice is a 1950s wife who is married to Eddie. She hasn't got any children of her own, but she does have a niece, Catherine, who she's looked after as a child and who she loves very much. Um, and the opening of the play, she comes in and she's found out from uh, Catherine that her cousins are coming to stay from Italy. They are illegal immigrants or submarines and they've come over and she's extraordinarily excited. And this is when we first see a little bit of Beatrice's character. She's extraordinarily house proud and she gets very concerned that she hasn't bought a new tablecloth and that she hasn't managed to arrange a particular dinner. And she's a bit concerned about that because she's going to meet these people who are family for the first time and she wants to impress them. We also see in this sequence when Eddie speaks about being concerned that he's going to lose his bed to these immigrants, that uh, she really loves Eddie. She desperately loves him. When he says that he's happy and he's proud to have the immigrants stay with him, he says this to her and she grabs his face in her hands and she says that he's an angel and that God will bless him. This grabbing of the face shows a real passion, a real intimacy. She really wants to be close to her husband. She loves him very much and she talks about this and she has tears in her eyes when she's speaking to him and calling him an angel. And the religious imagery obviously shouldn't be uh, underestimated in terms of its importance because of the Italian Catholic heritage. The problem that Beatrice has is that she's really aware that Eddie doesn't necessarily have the feelings that he should have for her. And she says to him, when am I going to be a wife again, Eddie? And this means that she's broken slightly the role of a woman in the 1950s which would have been to be subservient and not necessarily to question the husband. And she questions him about sex, almost questioning his masculinity. And it's because she really loves him and wants that intimacy and she cannot understand why things have changed. She doesn't want to admit to herself what she really knows, which is that Eddie actually has feelings for Catherine. Now, she wants Catherine to grow up and in the opening sequence, we see that she's very much trying to persuade Eddie to allow Catherine to go and have a job. And she says, you've got to get used to it. She is no baby no more. And um, when she's talking to him and trying to persuade him, she speaks with sympathy, but insistent force. She has a real determination to persuade Eddie to let Catherine go. And what's interesting about this is that she wants Eddie to treat Catherine like a woman in the fact that she wants him, him to let her go. But there's a kind of irony there because really... She's saying that he's treating her like a baby, but Eddie does not view Catherine as a baby. He sees her as a sexual uh, creature, and as a result, he covets her and he wants her to stay away from people who might be uh, interested in looking at her, and that's why he doesn't want her to go out to work. Not so much because he sees her as a baby. And uh, Beatrice is very much in denial about this relationship. She kind of knows that it's there, but she she doesn't want to admit it to herself. And she blames Catherine for um, Eddie's feelings and for his behaviour. And she says it's because she behaves like a baby and because Catherine throws herself at Eddie like she did when she was 12. And um, that's a real shame because actually I think it's probably quite unfair of Beatrice to blame Catherine. And I feel certainly through the blaming of Catherine that she almost condones Eddie's behaviour. She's almost a facilitator of his behaviour and his feelings because um, if Beatrice actually challenged him on it a little bit earlier, maybe then um, he might have been more consciously aware of those feelings himself and less in denial and perhaps they would have not grown. The problem is, is that Beatrice does challenge Eddie but not about that one thing. Um, and actually... Eddie feels really challenged because, and I guess this is because the kind of role that a wife was expected to take at the time wouldn't have been one who would be uh, challenging her husband. And in fact, Catherine talks about the fact that she's always getting it at Eddie and that if she was a wife, she would be bringing him beer and lighting his cigarettes and knowing when he was sad. And actually, Eddie says that he feels like um, he's a pigeon in a shooting gallery. And that's because Beatrice isn't afraid of calling Eddie on the things that she doesn't like and beating around the bush with the Catherine thing, but it's not until right at the end of the play that she finally acknowledges that actually that Eddie does have sexual feelings for Catherine and she says, you want something else, Eddie, and you can never have her. And even then, she's almost talking euphemistically because she never actually says, you have sexual feelings for Catherine, but she just heavily implies it. And it's interesting because 
the very first uh, time we see uh, Beatrice speak to Eddie, she's speaking and calling him an angel and saying that he um, will be blessed by God. She uses lots of exclamation marks in that, and it kind of shows this real uh, enthusiasm and passion for Eddie. And then she doesn't really speak with any real passion until right at the very end again when she says you can never have her, and again she uses these exclamation marks. And obviously that's a real change because instead of it being passionate love for Eddie, it's this utter frustration and hurt because Eddie has feelings for her niece, which is wrong in, in many ways, and just such a betrayal. But even when she is acknowledging this feeling, these feelings that Eddie has, she's still utterly, utterly devoted to him. And she says in this final scene over and over again, I love you, I love you. And she's trying to persuade him not to go out and fight Marco and to put his pride aside because I think she knows really what is driving him. And um, at the very end, when he's been stabbed, he says B and he calls her name. It's almost like Eddie goes back to Beatrice at the end, realising how lucky he is to have someone who's been so devoted. And she says, yes, yes. And again, with this exclamation mark, she's so desperate to hear what he has to say. She knows that he's dying in the street. And she just, she's so fueled by panic. She speaks in these monosyllabic uh, words with an exclamation mark because she's just, wants to quickly show him that she's acknowledging what he has to say before he dies and um, she's so desperate to hear him say that he loves her but instead he dies in the street and in so many ways then Beatrice is just a horribly tragic character because not only does she lose her husband who she loves but she also in the long term will lose Catherine to Rodolfo and that pretty much summarises the character of Beatrice who does very little to change throughout apart from really acknowledge finally publicly the issue that she knows uh, has been unspoken as a subtext throughout the whole play.